جزا الله بالخيرات عنا إماتا لنا نقل القرآن عذبا وسلسالا فمنهم بدور سابعة قد تواساطت سماء العلا والعادل زهرا وكمالا My beloved brothers and sisters Inshallah ta'ala today I'm going to go into the second shubha the second doubt that have been brought forward by the orientalists the uh, missionaries, the uh, non-Muslims in general, and also those who have apostated from Islam, the, the doubts that they have brought forward. The second one is, they claimed the reason why there are different recitations of the Qur'an is because It is because of the variation of the Masahif of Uthman They're saying, it's not because the Prophet recited it in these different ways. No, that's not the case they are saying. They're saying the reason why the people of Sham recite like this, and the people of Kufa recite like this, and the people of Basra recite like this, and the people of Mecca recite like this, and the people of Medina recite like this, is all based on the Mus'haf of Uthman. And it is not Al-Mushafaha, wa talaqi wa riwaya none of that. It is not transmission from the Prophet Sallallahu it's not a, uh, a recitation that was heard from the Prophet ﷺ. Because they said Uthman ﷺ, his masahif, the mushafs that he sent, they were different. Some of the masahif of Uthman had words in it that the other mushaf didn't have it. And that's why they are reading differently. It's all because of Uthman's mushaf. They said Uthman's mushaf didn't have the dire critics on it. And because of that, there were variation in recitation. And so inshallah ta'ala, my aim and objective is to debunk that and prove that that is not the case. That the qira of, Uth or sorry, the masahif of Uthman, the masahif of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu was not the reason why the variation of the reciters came. The, the variation of the recitation came because of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because of the Prophet reciting in this way. Uthman, he, radiallahu ta'ala, and whose mushaf narrowed each land to a particular form. That's what he did. Like in Uthman's mushaf did not initiate these differences. It didn't create these differences and these variations. Rather, Uthman's mushaf catered for the qiraat of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, in the Ardatul Akhira that he took from Jibreel, the final version that he took from Jibreel. Okay, so I, I hope this point is understood that Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu sat with the noble companions, the committee that he that were elected. And this committee of companions, they based the writing of the Masahif on the Ardatul Akhira, the final and last version of the Quran that came on that came down to the Prophet. Alayhi now, the Ardatul Akhira was different. Yani the final version that was given to, to the Prophet Sallallahu had variations. The Prophet recited in different ways. Uthman radiallahu anhu doesn't want to dismiss a Qira'ah which is from the Ardatul Akhira. He doesn't want to dismiss it. How does he make sure that he caters for all of that? How does he do that? He made variations in the Masahif. And he deliberately chose not to write the dots the dire critics on there. He specifically wanted to not write on there so it can cater for all of those recitations. I hope that is understood. Now, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to go into the response of this doubt. I'm going to debunk it with Nilal Karim. And I'm going to do it in six ways. This doubt, I'm going to respond to it in six ways to show you how flawed it is and how weak it is. The first, ans the first answer to this shubha or the first response to this shubha, this doubt, is the ikhtilaf, the variation, the differences in the recitation is from the Prophet ﷺ. And it is not from the mushaf that Uthman radiallahu anhu sent. The differences in recitation surpasses, yani precedes more like, precedes the masahif Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu sent. The Sahabas, they took the Qur'an from the Prophet ﷺ. They took these different qira'at from the Prophet ﷺ. Before 
Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu wrote the masahif and before he decimated it into uh, the main cities, the five main cities. The second response inshallah ta'ala is Uthman ibn Affan sent with every single mushaf a reciter who teaches the people the Quran. In what way? This Qari, this recite is going to teach the people the Quran in how the Qari took the Quran from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if the issue was relying on the Mus'haf alone and that the people only read what is in line with this Mus'haf without it being taken from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then Uthman would have only sent a Mus'haf and he would not have sent a reciter with it. The variation in recitation is from the reciter who's bound, he's bound, he's restricted to this mushaf that is given to him though. He, this Qari, if he knows the, uh, the qira on another mushaf, he's not allowed to read it. He's bound on this recitation that is given to him. So the Qari of Kufa is restricted to teach the people the mushaf he was given. The Qari of Mecca is restricted to teach the people the mushaf he's given. But this mushaf, this Qari has already taken it from the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Number three, if the issue was reliance on the Mus'haf alone, and it wasn't, it wasn't based upon what was taken from the Prophet and if this variation of Qira'at only came from the Masahif, and it didn't come from the uh, Prophet then it would have been that every recitation that is in line with the Mus'haf should be accepted. And if the Mus'haf is what governs the recitation and the issue is the Mus'haf only and it's nothing to do with uh, that is taken from the Prophet Sallallahu then if a person reads a recitation and it's in line with the Mus'haf it should be accepted from him, correct? Ah. There are many recitations that are in line with the Mus'hafs that Uthman sent but they were rejected and they were not accepted. Why? Because the Mus'haf is not the only reference point. It's before that is that is taken from the Prophet Sallallahu and that which is in the Mus'haf is what was taken from the Prophet Sallallahu Number four, history has actually shown us that the reciters, the ulama, the jurists, the fuqaha, the sulaha, the nuhat and other great scholars they rejected the recitation of a man by the name, by the name of Ibn Miqsam. Ibn Miqsam, he was a person who said, in a kulla qira, every recitation, wafaqatil mushaf, that is in line with the mushafs Uthman sent. Wawajhuha fil arabiyyah, and it's also in line with the Arabic language. Fal qira'atu biha ja'iza. He used to say that the recitation is correct, wa illam yakullaha sanad even if it wasn't transmitted from the Prophet ﷺ. The scholars, they scolded him, they refuted him, and they did not accept his recitation. So if it was only based upon the Mus'haf, and that was the uh, source for the companions alone, and it wasn't a matter of a talaqi wal mushafaha wal naql, then they would have said that the, recita the idea and the, proposer, the proposal of Ibn Miqsam is correct. But they didn't. The fifth response, inshaAllah ta'ala, is and this is Qasim al Dhahr. This is going to break the back. The presence of words in the Mus'haf that are written in one way. That word is written in one way. Okay? That being said, the Qurra and the reciters differed in the way that they recited it. Some are reading it this way, some are reading it in this way. The word is written in one way, it's written in one way. Particular. Why is there a different recitation? If the recitation is based upon the writing, then they should have recited it in the same way. Why is there variation in their recitation? The variation is not coming from the Mus'haf. It's coming from where? It's coming from the Prophet ﷺ, which they took it from. I'll give two examples, inshallah. When I give you these two examples, it becomes clear for you. The word Ibrahim, it's found in the Mus'haf 69 times. The word Ibrahim is found in the Quran 69 times. Ibn Amir, 
who is the imam of the people of Sham. Muhammad Dimashq al-Shami Dar ibn Amirin Fatilka bi Abdillahi Tabat Muhallala Ibn Amr, the Qari of the people of Sham. In those 69 places where the name Ibrahim came, Ibn Amr, 33 places, he recited it as Ibrahim. 33 places. And the remaining he, he recited it as Ibrahim. Rather, in one place, in one verse, he comes and he recites uh, in, um, uh, sorry, in one surah, in one surah, in one surah, he's reading Ibrahim one place and another place he's reading it as Ibrahim. In one surah. Why is he doing that? It's because it's mushafaha and at taraqi The reason why he's reading, reciting it as Ibrahim here is because the Prophet recited it here, Ibrahim. And the Prophet recited it here, Ibrahim. Now, my beloved brothers and sisters, I want to show you something very amazing here. The writing of the Mus'haf and how it's written. Let's look at the word Ibrahim. Allah mentions in Surah Al-Baqarah when he says, وَإِذِ بِتَلَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَتَمَّهُنْ وَإِذِ بِتَلَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ وَإِذِ بِتَلَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ here we have Ibrahim. Here we have what? Ibrahim. Ibrahim here in Surah Al-Baqarah is written with an alif. The way it's written. If you go to the Mus'haf and you look at it, you find it with an alif. That's how it's written. And the Qur'a differed on this. They didn't agree on it. You go to Surah Ibrahim. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ جَعَلْ هَذَا الْبَلَدَ آمِنَا وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ you find there's no alif on this. There's no alif on it. It's with a ya. It's Ibrahim. And in Surah Al-Baqarah is written as what? Ibrahim. And in Surah Ibrahim is written as what? Ibrahim. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ جَعَلْ هَذَا الْبَلَدَ The Qur'a differed on it. Why is there differences in both? In writing. And why is there differences in, ver in recitation? This shows us that the writing and the mushaf, the way it's written, it's not the governing thing on the qiraat. The qiraat governs the rasm. The, the, the recitation that was taken from the Prophet is what's governing the uh, mushaf that Uthman said. The second example that makes it very clear that the Quran is governed by the Qiraat. And the Qiraat is what governs the mus Mus'haf that Uthman radiallahu anhu said. And it's not vice versa. For example, we have the word Khatifa Yakhtafu. A fi'il madi and a fi'il mudari. A present verb and a past verb. Khatifa is a past verb. And Yakhtafu is a present verb. Min babi alima ya'lamu. In the Quran, we have this word. And in the Arabic language, there's two ways you can say it. You can say, Khatifa yakhtafu. Or you can say, Khatifa yakhtafu. Both ways. Arabic language accepts that. I repeat, there's two ways of saying it. You can say, Khatifa, like, Fa'ila. And then, Yakhtafu. And as a side benefit, Fa'ila, the qiyas is always yaf'alu. Like alima ya'lam. That's the qiyas. Anything other than that is shad. Whether it's a fi'il lazim or fi'il muta'addi, a transitive verb or intransitive verb, or whether it's a verb which is sahih or mu'tal, it doesn't matter. Yaf'alu is the qiyas. Okay? That's why you say yakhafu. Khafa yakhafu. Khafa comes from the word khawifa. And it becomes kha, fa. And it's mu'tal. It becomes yaf'al. That's the qiyas. There's also shad and the shad are divided into two, but we're not going to go into that. You study that in sarf, inshallah ta'ala. So we have the word, and khatifa yakhtafu. Khatifa yakhtafu. That's one way of saying it. You also have khatafa, and the fi'il mudari is still the same, which is yakhtafu. And the 
Fa'ala comes in four ways. It comes as in four ways. It comes in yaf'ilu, yaf'ulu, yaf'alu. And the third one is yaf'ulu wa yaf'ilu. Same, simultaneously at the same time. Here we have what? Yaf'alu. Like amada ya'madu. Amada ya'madu. So what we learned here is that the word khatafa yakhtifu. Ama khatifa yakhtafu. Both ways we can say it. But we find that the Qurra don't differ. Even though there is two lugha in it, two ways of the Arabic language can say it. And the Mus'haf of Uthman accepts both. It can be recited both of those ways. We find that the reciters all agree on one. Which is what? Khatifa yakhtafu. None of them said that. The Madi is khatafa. They all said khatifa in the Quran. Even though the Arabic accepts it. The Mus'haf of Uthman accepts it. It's missing one condition. What is that condition? It's missing. There is no at-talaqi wal-mushafaha. It's not being taken from the Prophet ﷺ. And that's why you find in Surah Al-Safat, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He says, إِلَّا مَنْ خَطِفَ الْخَطْفَةَ إِلَّا مَنْ خَطِفَ الْخَطْفَةَ And you find in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He says, يَكَادُ الْبَرْقُ يَخْطَفُ أَبَصَارَهُمْ All of the reciters recited as what? إِلَّا مَنْ خَطِفَ الْخَطْفَةَ In Surah Al-Safat, and they recited Surah Al-Baqarah, all of them, يَكَادُ الْبَرْقُ يَخْ so that shows us that the issue is not about if it is in line with the Mus'haf only and that and the variation of the Qira'at is because of the Mus'hafs. It's very weak and it's a flawed argument. Last but not least, to show that this Qira'at, the variations that we see in it is because of the Prophet and reading it in those different ways, is that if we say that the variation is based on the Masahif Uthman radiallahu anhu sent. And that everybody can read the Mus'haf of Uthman. And whatever way he wants to read it, he can. Then that means the Quran has, it, has in it Kalamul Bashar. The statements and the views and the opinions and the ijtihadat of men. It's not the speech of Allah. And that's disbelief. And that is going against the clear-cut verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he says, وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ الْبَشَرِ That the Qur'an is not the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The unanimous agreement of the great scholars of Islam. Also, it goes against the ayah, وَإِذَا تُتْلَ عَلِيمْ آيَاتُنَا قَالَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَرْجُونَ لِقَاءَنَا أَتِبِ قُرْآنٍ غَيْرِ هَذَا أَوْ بَدِّلْهُ قُلْ مَا يَكُونُ لِي أَنْ أُبَدِّلْهُ مِنْ تِلْقَاءِ نَفْسِي the Qur'an being told to the Prophet Muhammad, you are taking the Qur'an from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It also goes against the ayah where Allah wa ta'ala said to the Prophet, uh, وَإِنَّهُ لَتَنْزِيلُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحُ الْأَمِينَ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُنْذِرِينَ بِلِسَانٍ عَرَبِيٍ مُبِينَ That the Qur'an is all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It also takes away that the Qur'an is a mu'jiza, it's a miracle. When Allah said to the disbelievers, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبَدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِصُورَةٍ مِّنْ مِثْلِهِ وَدْعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ That the Qur'an is a miracle. If we say that the Qur'an has the speech of the humans in there, it takes away from it being a miracle. And it entails that the Qur'an has human element in it, and that is why uh, the Qur'an shouldn't be called a miracle, because human speech is open to mistakes and errors and faults. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it isn't. It isn't. Allah also said that in the Quran, He said, That if this Quran was to come from other than Allah, you would have found contradiction in it. So what we say, brothers and sisters, is that the Quran, the variations, and the differences that we're seeing is based on how the Sahabas took it from the Prophet والسلام, And it is not because of what? the Masahif of Uthman dictated it for them. Yes, what we say is that Uthman's Masahif uh, uh, narrowed each country to a particular recitation. But does that mean that Uthman came up with that recitation and that that Mus'haf is what brought that difference? No, we say the Prophet recited it like that before the Masahif were written. And the Masahif were written on the variations of Uthman uh, on the Prophet Sallallahu recitation. I hope I made this point clear and that it's, it's well understood by everybody. Uh, anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me. 
and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. I will see you inshallah ta'ala in the next episode where I will mention another shubha from the shubhas that they bring uh, forward. Uh, until then, barakallahu feekum wa jazakumullahu khayra. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple. Like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.